Thank you, Ratakar. It's a pleasure and honor to have you on Change I Am Possible, which is India's first uh, feature tech podcast. I'm your host, Eddie Avil. And to the people who don't know about you, I'm going to give them like a brief introduction and then we can just uh, go on with the conversation. So, Mr. Ratnagar Raya Varapu is the Director of Engineering at Samsung Research and Development India for 5G Mobile Communication. He has worked on several cutting edge technologies that have a major role in shaping the world today. Some of his most famous work involve research, development, and productization of wireless technologies. He's an innovator with numerous patents and an analyst of RMK Engineering College. Really appreciate you taking time being part of Change and Possible Podcast. So we are living in exceptional times. You know, one side is the impact of COVID. You know, uh, so, so the, the, co- the impact of COVID is obviously it's got the good and the bad and the ugly. The good is that you know we've uh, kind of understood that the environment. Uh, is breathing because of us taking a back seat and uh, being at home we've understood uh, that work from home can be productive the bad side obviously is the economy is ter- terribly down we are 24% gdp is down people are jobless and that means you know people you know, you know loss of job means you know there'll be families will be going without food and that's that's really disturbing you know and and the ugly side obviously is the government which claims that they have uh, they have a 20 lakh crore stimulus uh, fund which nobody has seen right so so the, but with the the, the the there's also the positive side is that emerging technologies you know it's suddenly uh, being completely ex- accelerated so artificial intelligence iot ar vr mr robotics autonomous vehicles smart cities industry automation it all depends on the premise of 5G seamless connectivity speed and almost zero latency so can you start by explaining what 5G is and the reason for so much excitement and hype behind this technology yeah firstly uh, thank you very much Eddie. thank you for uh, calling me in it's so nice to talk to you and through you probably reach a lot more people and it's definitely an exciting topic for me because this is what we are breathing and eating day in day out right. these days since you mentioned the gdp you know, there are many actual studies i mean by reputed institutes like imperial college london right. Right. they point a very strong correlation between the digital connectivity of a country or an economy and the boost it provides to the gdp right Right. There is a very high positive correlation. So the more connected the society is, the more economy is. I mean, the bigger boost it will, uh, you know, uh, get it get from these technologies. You need a network or a communication technology to connect as many things or as many people as possible. If the question is why do we need a new G? Why do we need a 5G? Right. So it means. The capacity is being offered by the existing networks. I mean, have reached a choking point where it's very difficult for you to connect more people or connect more things. Point one, and to offer the next level of communication experience to the people who are already connected to the existing networks. So, because these two are not possible, so there is a need to innovate and uh, you know extract some new capacities out of these airwaves. To, so to get those additional capacities. What is 5G? I mean, that question is typically like, you know, there is a, this, uh, you know, making sense of an elephant. I mean, five blind men trying to describe an elephant. So it's almost uh, in that sense because anything and everything fancier, I mean, can be associated with 5G. Hey, I mean, 5G can do that or 5G does this and all. Uh, so in that sense, there are certain enablers for 5G. Some technologies, okay, because these are available now, so 5G is possible. And there are some existing legacy technologies which were never popular because, I mean, uh, there are these enablers are not available, so they cannot be realized or uh, in a proper way. So now those all become reality with 5G. So now all this, you know, mixes together being referred to as 5G. So since you mentioned, I mean, high data rate and uh, lower latency. So I just talk about a probably a couple of enablers that make this possible. So when we talk about data rates, I mean, you know, because it's now we're all talking about the wireless world. So the the airwaves are the pipes, data pipes, right? So the the capacity of your network 
is like actually you can imagine a water pipe you know, you know coming from your uh, whatever local tank all the way to your household tap right your household tap is your mobile so the volume of water that can flow through that pipe is equivalent to the amount of data that can flow through the airwaves right on, on your onto your mobile device so that pipe whatever is the traditional pipes we are having for the 4g or 3g or all the legacy technologies so as you keep on adding more users as you keep on adding more taps right the same pipes capacity gets shared between all these taps so the average water flowing out of each taps it reduces it drops over a period of time as you are adding more uh, more users and uh, as each user starts demanding more and more uh, water or as in, in this case more and more data capacity or data rates so that's when you need to invent this you know or find out where are these bigger pipes huger pipes which can carry larger volumes of uh, uh data unimaginable before so that's where people stumbled upon this what is called as you know we have this uh, spectrum i mean of uh, airwaves uh, which carry this uh, communication signals so people stumbled upon and said that hey i mean there are these uh, frequency ranges i mean which are called as millimeter waves actually which are traditionally not in use for mobile communication because they have their propagation characteristics i mean they were earlier not suitable they have huge propagation losses right they were not feasible i mean to be used for a regular commun- mobile communication but with the help of new techniques both in the antenna systems you know and in the uh, the digital propagation techniques because of these new innovations there people thought that hey now this millimeter waves can be used for wireless mobile communication and these millimeter waves i mean these frequencies i mean they have huge amount of untapped bandwidth they are not clogged like the existing frequencies what we use for our 3g 4g mobile communication so so those huge pipes are now available uh, for 5g i mean 5g made them possible to be used for mobile communication and there are other different types of pipes as in the other different frequency bands like for example the traditional frequencies which use for our home wifi right they are called 3.5 gigahertz 5 gigahertz frequency bands which were suitable for short range communication like wifi but were never put to use for a wireless mobile communication so now those were also pulled in and on top of that all the existing frequency bands which are in use for 3g and 4g all this together becomes 5g basically now the bigger pipes with uh, millimeter wave frequencies uh, frequency bands and then this uh, medium sized pipes which are these you know the frequencies used for home wifi and all the existing smaller pipes which are in use for 3g and 4g all these put together becomes the 5g radio or 5g air interface and of course second thing you you mentioned about the latency near zero latency so so this is the other thing so in the existing say 4g devices or the 4g networks uh, typically the way we use loosely the term latency uh, is the with the, in terms of the round trip time like for example if the network or the tower sends you a packet of information and your device is able to decode it process it and is able to reply back saying that hey i have received this properly now you can send the next packet right so this is the round trip time the packet comes up comes in and i send an acknowledgement which reaches the network this is one round trip so that round trip i mean to account for the uh, processing techniques of the previous generation handsets and the networks it was set at a certain higher value the the air interface is defined in such a way that hey i give you up to say 10 milliseconds time for you to digest or process what i am sending and send me an acknowledgement back but now because the devices are faster the networks are faster people felt that okay now this air interface can be trimmed down i mean you need not really wait for this much or you need not really you know send me an acknowledgement for bigger chunks of data you, you can probably send me quicker the acknowledgements so that's how the round trip time actually shrunk by a tenth so say for example in the 4g parlance i mean we say the round trip time was about 10 milliseconds so now that shrunk to about 1 millisecond so that means 
the 5G air interface compared to your 4G air interface, it uh, it probably multiplied your data rates by 100x while reducing the latency simultaneously by 10x. So that's what makes it uh, 5G and uh, so attractive for a lot more new services. Thank you for explaining it so beautifully. And I, I'll just go back to the beginning of the con- conversation when, when you mentioned that uh, GDP is directly correlated with digitization. I hope enterprise understand that, you know, we be living in exceptional times, you know, and, and there is so much uh, things or opportunities available out there if you adapt and and change with times and adopt these technologies which are available where you can not just grow your businesses but yourself too you know we're living in exceptional times and you also mentioned that 5g is an enabler and and all of these technologies you know right from uh, virtual reality which is a very data hungry uh, technology right i mean uh, it will be such a boost for it to actually become what it claims it can do the transformation that it can create uh, for enterprise the consumers is humongous and artificial intelligence everybody knows about that how how deeply it can impact mankind could you also explain these different frequencies you know uh, there is low band mid band and high band could you explain the pros and cons and what signal band is samsung working on Yes, in fact, you you use the probably the more appropriate words. I mean, like the the low bands, the mid bands, and the high bands are the uh, the right way to designate these frequency bands. Again, the propagation characteristics of these radio frequencies they vary hugely depending on what band uh, they are being transmitted at. Uh, so, in general, higher the frequency, the poorer the uh, propagation characteristics. So this is the thumb rule. In fact, to explain it in a very um, daily situations, like for example, for a very simple reason, you'll be able to hear the uh, noises that are happening in your uh, neighboring room, you know, separated by a wall, but you don't see the lights that are turned on in the neighboring room. Right? So that's because the sound frequencies can penetrate through these walls, whereas the light frequency cannot penetrate. So because light is at a much much higher frequency than the uh, audio signals so so this is precisely the relation the low bands as we call i mean like it can be your 600 megahertz 800 megahertz same anything below say 2.4 gigahertz of frequencies which are currently in use for 4g technologies when I mean, you can loosely call them as uh, low bands or low to mid bands uh, so they have better propagation characteristics meaning you are inside an office or you are in your basement or you are you know uh, you are surrounded by a lot of concrete uh, walls and buildings right still you can get a very good coverage inside your, your work area or your or with your home right if these frequencies are used for transmission whereas this mid bands again i mean like their uh, the distance of propagation gets limited because as they travel farther and farther they get attenuated uh, they get attenuated uh, higher higher so you cannot deploy large coverage cells using these mid bands and same goes even worse for higher bands basically as you go for higher bands like this gigahertz of bands like in fact in the 5g current deployments are around 28 gigahertz and 39 gigahertz bands Uh, the live network deployments whatever are happening in elsewhere in the world so their propagation characteristics tend to be poorer uh, because of the propagation nature i mean the environmental effects atmospheric effects on these millimeter waves uh, but the new rf techniques like this massive mimo or there are antenna arrays actually sitting on your device and on the network side which will try to compensate this environmental effects by you know by boosting the energy into sharper beams i mean there is actually a new technology in 5g uh, which is called as a massive mimo uh, so which is basically using an array of antennas you actually create a beam of energy i mean it's not it's like a torch actually where you can actually make a pinpointed beam of energy 
by applying this beam forming technology you can actually form a very sharp beam of millimeter wave energy which offsets the environmental effects on the uh, propagation losses and vice versa of course we thought we talked about so lower the band better the propagation characteristics but at the same time currently higher the band i mean the more is the available spectrum so the so traditionally the deployments happen like this i mean if you want to you know have a vast coverage i mean you you go for a one uh, one low band cell right which can give you bigger coverage more and more people will be able to see your network uh, but if you want a very high bandwidth uh, applications say in pockets like for example it's a mall or it's an office or it's an enterprise so there you tend to deploy a smaller cells which are either at at these mid bands or operating at these high bands so that's the typical deployments tend to look like so when it comes to samsung i mean we have already you know launched both our devices and networks in many countries worldwide so and we support all these bands when in fact we already launching already launched for about 100 carriers across probably 25 countries so and some of them operate at low bands some of them operate at mid and high bands yeah that would be cool cool so 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 at currently we have 5g ready mobiles we got 5g ready tablets we we got 5g 5g ready virtual reality headset but there's no 5g yet in india the spectrum distribution in india has been delayed for to 2021 now ericsson uh, i believe they had quoted sometime back they said that 5g is not coming to india before 22 when do you see 5g coming to india realistically so i think as you yourself mentioned i think the the technology part is actually ready and available i mean both from the devices perspective as well as from the uh, network perspective uh, in fact device portfolio itself if you see i mean say for example when i talk about say samsung 5g device portfolio so today all of our flagship devices like be it the say s20 or note 20 or the fold 2 or the flip they all are 5g they support 5g they are launched in several markets and most notably of course in usa europe korea japan all these markets and then we have certain non soft non smartphone products also like for example we have a tablet actually today enabled with a 5g connectivity uh, the galaxy chrome flexbook right there are the tablet uh, tab s7 plus and then of course we are bringing 5g into our mid tier devices also like because so it's no longer a, you know a premium tier technology available only for select few like today i mean we have launched uh, models like a71 a51 and even a42 i mean these are all the uh, you know next tech devices which are all equipped with 5g today in many global markets uh so likewise there are several network players of course you quoted ericsson so in fact uh, samsung we have our own network business we have a 5g technology deployed in many countries likewise there are other players like nokia like as you mentioned the only thing that is probably pending is the spectrum auctions so in my view as soon as the spectrum auctions happen as long as uh, india adopts the global 5g standards which are deployed elsewhere the deployment and launch can happen very quickly right so so is there a 5g trial which has happened here in india uh, uh, if yes can you share details on that and and there was this some media uh, release which said the 5g spectrum is going to be very very expensive will this be a bottleneck for 5g adoption in india so there are two things of course what you asked about the, one is the trial things so as far as i know i mean several players have applied for trial licenses but they are not approved yet so so trials probably outside of the closed laboratories are, are yet to begin in right. that sense right uh, but in that sense again as i mentioned as long as you are applying a global standard so because the same terminal same networks you know they are already deployed and actually working from many months or actually years in some cases so so in that sense they should seamlessly work i mean so that piece uh, i don't think will be complicated many of the indian carriers i mean they have concerns with the you know the the capital needs to acquire spectrum at such a cost right 
so this were probably i think uh, carriers worldwide if you see they are trying to create some new business models to deploy 5g quickly and then monetize 5g like for example i mean 5g has enabled this concept of uh, network slicing wherein both your radio network as well as your core network the resources can be sliced suiting the needs of a specific service like for example say some say some healthcare provider or some health service right it needs very very low latencies because you are transmitting some information in real time right it could be some sensor some health sensor a transmission of some heartbeat or some or yeah something very important which needs to be really really real time but i don't care about the data rates i don't need i'm not streaming a you know 4k video right my bandwidth need is quite less so as a healthcare service provider i will be able to go and ask my network that hey can you make a slice for me which will guarantee this much latency right with a minimal bandwidth requirement so they will be able to carve that kind of a slice and they will be able to monetize the network carriers will be able to monetize <laughs> likewise in fact the same example goes for interactive gaming actually so if you have such a very very low latency network a uh, lot of interactive live gaming where you know you take an action on your device you are playing a, a multiplayer game with a lot of other people you know spread across so any action you do on your device right uh, that needs to instantaneously reflect in all other devices because you are you are all playing the same game so in today's network i mean that that latency is not guaranteed so that's why you you'll see several uh, effects because of that but uh, tomorrow a gaming company can create a game which is specifically meant for this real time interactive gaming and can ask the network hey i need this much latency guaranteed can you make a slice for me and network can make a slice and monetize that so likewise all the streaming uh, say we are streaming for example when I mean, they should be able to ask the network to give a very high bandwidth slice with some relaxations on latency because you don't care latency as long as you are buffering enough uh, data for example right so network providers or service providers will be able to monetize so that should offset some of the costs or investments whatever they will uh, incur in deploying 5g right so, so somebody who's been invested in this technology what excites you the most about 5g And, and can you talk uh, about your your patents? I mean, obviously not into detail, but just something which you are like really excited about working on. Yes, yeah, sure, definitely. In fact, that's the exciting part for a lot of the engineering teams like us. Right? Um, in fact, I mean, so probably the pleasure we derive, like for example, when this uh, the world's first five G smartphone or Galaxy S ten five G, it was launched in USA with a carrier called as Verizon. Right. So they have a millimeter wave network, and uh, of course, during our tests, we realize. I mean, uh, it's a beast. I mean, you can just go to a GBPS data rate in no time. I mean, if you if you are running your speed test, right? So you are clocking GBPS data, rate. and uh, so the way once the devices are delivered to the carrier, right, and the way they demonstrate it, that hey, I mean, they have a partnership with probably Netflix, right? <laughs> click it and the download of a huge movie you know, it gets over in seconds at the blink of your second and then the ai generates in the you know people watching the demo so as engineers probably sitting behind and watching this so that that on people's face is what you know you really take pride in saying that you know we made it possible right so at the same time for this low latency experiences in fact uh, in the last year's mobile world congress i mean we demonstrated uh, the mobile edge computing how this low latency if you experience it with the help of a interactive game so we demonstrated in the mobile world congress and again the experience is like surreal i mean like you know uh, it's a purpose built game created by our gaming partner actually niantic and it went quite well so again you can actually when you see w- what actually happens in a real user's hands not just in an engineer's hands so that's when you start experiencing what 5g can do more in fact people say one of the primary use cases for uh, the 5g millimeter wave or the or, or even any form of 5g is actually what is called as a fixed wireless access 
right i mean these days i mean you are building say new apartment blocks or you are you know building new colonies right if you need to you know dig your cables and uh, lay a wired network to all these new apartments in new york uh, or you need to connect a new village for example so i mean it's a huge intensive and delay prone uh, exercise today but the moment you bring in a 5g fixed wireless access that hey i mean this is a 5g terminal fixed wireless access terminal I hang it on top of my order my panchayat office or prime health care center right and its back hall is 5g so where it can get connected to the nearest town the the a 5g connectivity and this guy this fixed wireless access uh, terminal can provide wifi connectivity to all the people in the vicinity right so this can be possible in homes this can be possible in villages or rural areas so so fixed wireless active uh, access is actually a huge uh, uh, big use case for 5g so like that we are really awaiting so lot more application developers to see and experience this and develop new features to their existing applications or develop new applications altogether to make use of this capacities yeah yeah so, so the possibilities and experiences which can be built on 5g is, is endless you spoke about your partners behind tech i mean they they are the ones who are the 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 creators behind pokemon go just a couple of years back i mean people kids were running with their phones trying to you know play the game and and yeah there is so much exciting things happening and, and the promise of 5g is humongous you know it can be an enabler for smart cities iot ar vr mr autonomous uh, vehicles so 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 can you talk about since you were talking about use cases can you delve on that a little bit and 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 can you share light on the possibilities of technologies or what it can uh, bring to people you know for enterprise as well as consumers in the immediate term as in the next couple of years to the next in, or in the next decade what are the transformation we going to see and which industries are going to be get most impacted by forge the two industries i mean which anyway seems to take a lead uh, compared to the rest of the players seem to be naturally the entertainment industry i mean which is essentially comprises of what you call as your streaming right now the streaming can be much more richer and i mean which of course morphs into your vr world actually as you go forward right um, and second of course your gaming industry because they are very very looking forward to a very extremely low latency network to offer uh, newer gaming experiences so this are anyway known or rather you can expect them or anticipate them right so that, that's why let's keep them aside because they are, they are kind of anyway doing that already they are in the in a position to exploit 5g to the fullest extent so if i am an enterprise right uh, and uh, i have a huge uh, complex i mean my facilities my factory my administration you know my uh, uh, storage right warehouses so i have all my facilities so can i set up a private network on my own like uh, which exactly delivers to my needs I mean, in the colloquial parlance, it's like having your own lease line. Actually, if it's just a pure broadband, right? You have a lease line which guarantees your capacity. But now, in my facilities, I mean, I have a diverse varieties of equipments. Actually, like uh, I can have so many sensors, you know, spread across the uh, facility. Uh, they all need to long last with a very high battery life, right? but at the same time the response has to be very very real time like if some sensor sends a very sensitive some alarm you know to a manager sitting somewhere right the action should be immediate basically right like, uh, any risk mitigation action that needs to be taken right so at the same time there can be what are there can be all these robotic arms working in on your assembly line right which may need to be controlled by a remote operator and that needs a very very low latency responses right and uh, you could be having you know all these uh, cctvs or monitors i mean which are actually uh, you know capturing the image 
with a very high resolution and sending it for a analytics at a remote center i mean you can be having your uh, all these ai image processing all this uh, an algorithm sitting on a uh, cloud somewhere so all this needs to go there and the outcomes of that uh, your algorithm needs to be applied back right so it needs a very high bandwidth network so so like this most of this uh, manufacturing industries i mean they have a diverse needs of connectivity as well as the capacities uh, telcos are the carriers they are coming up with this concept of a private network hey, i mean i mean it's actually part of their probably the macro infrastructure remains the same but because of this network slicing concept probably right i can carve out slices needed for your need and set up the infra for you and provide probably the terminals to you uh, which are exclusively only for you nobody else shares this capacity so it's like you are setting up your own private network so so this is going to actually you know automate this manufacturing spaces because today a lot of these things are not fully automated because there is no guaranteed latency i mean uh, otherwise for example if you have a very risky work environment like it can be your nuclear plant or can your it can be your mine it can be you know any remote facility today it cannot be fully operated remotely because there is no guarantee for low latency responses for the you know for the sensors and the actors they are treated uh, and they need to be together so and likewise because there are no guaranteed high bandwidth services with low latencies so a lot of things are not being possible even though the use cases exist out there so so that's where uh, the whole manufacturing industry i mean that's why they use this word uh, smart factory or industry 4.0 in conjunction with 5g so that 5g will be an enabler for industry 4.0 second of course we are already seeing it increasingly i mean things are moving to cloud right i mean already uh, all of us are storing our data our personal videos photographs right so increasingly on the cloud and of course a lot of companies i mean they have moved all their processing to the cloud right so so that trend also will see a i mean massive acceleration i mean basically everything in cloud is because now your connectivity becomes cheaper because now you, because your network capacity has become 100x so theoretically your uh, cost per bit of data should actually drop down accordingly right because you are having this huge capacities so now it may not afford you any more you know to buy a sd card and you know augment your storage locally for example it may be very easier for you to store everything in cloud and you know get it on demand whenever you want uh, and of course the healthcare right because so far i mean in fact probably because it's very very uh, relevant in the context of india for example because two of the most critical sectors which are needed for any country's development are actually you know education and healthcare right yes and uh, today these two are suffering because you know say take the case of education not everybody is getting the same uniform quality of say the teaching content as well as yes. the teacher quality you can imagine a smart classroom basically wherein the you know the best faculty equipped with the best digital content <laughs> sitting somewhere and teaching to lot more millions of people simultaneously you know than getting limited to one single classroom so that's one thing in fact definitely i would say that uh, you know the, especially the government also needs to look into 5g on what it can enable for the yes better governance all these will become actually really possible with a true deployment of 5g in its true sense i mean both with its uh, all this core network with all its cloud computing i mean uh, cloud deployments edge computing and all these things plus the radio with all these high band mid band and low bands so this will uncover all these things for everybody be it for government or for the corporates lovely lovely so i i'm so very excited because technology it is growing in such a rapid pace and the and it, it it's it's almost like a bullet train you know and if you are not catching it if you are not in it you will be left way 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 behind as an enterprise as as an individual you need to leverage these opportunities technology is a double edged sword you know uh, there is already millions of people who have lost their jobs because of covid now automation you know like i said it's a double edged sword it promises 
to create jobs because suddenly there's going to be people who are going to be employed in the field of uh, artificial intelligence cloud compute, computing ar vr mr and things like that but if you see india we are not really prepared for it we do not have the workforce you mentioned about education it's it's we, we do have a problem at this point of time you know there's a large number of people who are uh, who are still not educated and possibly 5g could be that uh, technology um, converging with maybe ar vr to go to the interiors and create an equal education opportunity for everyone how beautiful would that be for the entire country because if we want to grow a country uh, grow as a country and become a superpower we need to create an equitable future where we take everybody involved especially the ones who are a uh, lower middle class you know because technology has created so much opportunity you know there is vast amount of knowledge available free at this point of time education at this point of time is actually free while these traditional education systems are charging a bomb there is things right. like moocs which is open and free so the only thing at times i feel is sometimes which is stopping us is our desire and intent now 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 i i, I spoke about the technology being a double edged sword now 5g it, it's going to enable everything and it's going to accelerate or take us into the future but the downside you said the low frequencies it tends to pass through walls now there is there has been this conversation going on of people who are like you know conspiracy theorists and people are quite scared about 5g as a technology you know so how will this radiation of this technology 5g affect the elderly and the vulnerable population how safe is 5g would you like to shine a light on that no conversation ends without you know this coming up so uh, in that sense yeah it's a expected question um you know so this were the the low bands of 5g when we talk right there's all these low bands and mid bands so it's not that 5g is uh, you know doing anything or worsening to the transmissions or receptions and those frequency bands so in those frequencies it's going to be pretty much same as what we have today for 3g and 4g in that sense it's uh, uh, the radio propagation wise right uh, it's not going to add or take away anything from that and for the this technology 3g and 4g as you know we already have safety standards set by each country like for example of course we have this uh, what is called as a sar right specific absorption rate so which means basically say per kg of your human body weight what is the safest limit for you know the absorption that can happen so and the sar values are are mandated there is a government mandate that okay it cannot be more than this there is a certain number and in fact for example if you see all the samsung devices that are probably available in india if you go and see the sar specifications right they actually go over and beyond the specified uh, uh, you know mandatory value they are actually much better in terms of the absorption right so that way the safety uh, limits are met and same thing will be applicable for the 5g devices also when they are operating in these frequency bands right so now of course there is a a uh, concern related to the higher bands because those are the new bands into the mix because all these low bands and mid bands are already in use for your uh, you know you know cellular communication as well as your home wifi right so the new bands that are coming into picture is millimeter wave bands so that's why there are uh, concerns probably even in the you know uh, engineering community also before so these were like this sar how the uh, metric was set so even for this millimeter of transmissions agencies like uh, you know fcc in usa so they have stepped in and they have, they came up with certain guidelines and uh, you know mandatory requirements so for example in case of uh, 5g millimeter wave they specified a metric called as mpe max permissible exposure so it's it's equivalent of your sar for low bands for millimeter wave it's mpe max permissible exposure like how much is it permissible of certain kg of human tissue right what is a permissible exposure to be safe so they set that limit and uh, without getting certification from fcc that you are within that limit it's impossible to launch a device with higher bands operating in usa 
So likewise, whenever each and every country's regulatory authority, when they come with a safety limit, right? So all the whatever the device OEMs as well as the network solution providers, they all have to meet those uh, uh, regulatory or compliance requirements to be able to do business. Probably conspiracy theories would arise because, say, probably at a certain trial stage, if somebody is testing without meeting these requirements. Probably in a lab or in a you know or in a controlled environment, the, there could have been you know the theory is floating because of that. But otherwise, the commercially deployed networks they have to meet the safety standards and the regulatory criteria set by the agencies. But of course, there are several other you know conspiracy theories floating around 5G. Like for example, the most recent one I heard is you know in the United Kingdom, right? People blame 5G for the transmission oh. of the virus. Right? Yeah, the COVID is getting propagated because of 5G waves. So, which is anyway already debunked by many yeah, <laughs> international yeah. agencies. So, so in terms of propagation characteristics, it's no different from any other uh, you know right. ra- radiation, right. be it from your television or from your Wi-Fi base station and all. Right. So, so the power levels reaching your device tend to be the uh, same, right. you know, be it whatever band you're operating. Right, right. Yeah, 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 fair enough. Fair enough. So, so yes, yeah, so in, in another 10 years, all of these technologies, which is converging, it, it's growing into a giant. You know, the, the, these technologies are in some ways, if we do not hold them or have a collaborative approach, will surely go out of uh, uh, the control of mankind. You know, when, when, when I say that, I, I talk about artificial intelligence, I, I talk about virtual reality, I talk about synthetic biology, you know, because the, 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 these are technologies which are extremely, extremely potential. It can make a break a company, a nation or the entire world. It could be an existential threat. Now, some of the biggest nations... I've understood that these technologies can give you an undue advantage and they are all trying to, uh, you know, uh, get hold of that technology. 5G being one of those really, really potential technology. Is Samsung engaging the government and talking to them about the potential about this technology? Again, I'm sure there are... uh, Departments in Samsung, you know, which interface with the uh, government bodies or the regulatory authorities. So in terms of technology wise and enablement wise, I mean, so all the partnerships or the interfaces are in place. So as and when, you know, the carriers get these regulatory clearances, then, you know, Samsung will be in a position to accelerate the deployment. What are you most excited about? And I heard that Samsung and some European companies are already working on 6G. (laughs) We've not even got 5G, but there are companies who are actually working on 6G. And so is Samsung. I think you guys are also uh, put put, put out a a white paper. So could you end with that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So for a... For communication engineers, I mean, like me especially, so this is what excites us I mean, because, you know, I, I'm doing this probably from the 2G days, right? <laughs> so, so once you shape up a G and, you know, leave it aside into the market, leave it into the market, then you see, okay, what all it's not able to do? Because see, eventually you are everywhere, you're battling against the, the theory. What does the theory say? Okay, a communication channel can have up to this much capacity. So, but do you have the techniques to milk or squeeze out all this capacity from the airwaves? Oh no, there is still a lot more capacity left. Okay, now let's try it in 3G. Are we able to milk out completely? No, 4G. So that's the uh, evolution that's that has been in progress since last couple of decades, right? So in that sense, on this point, I mean, even 5G too, even though we launched our first 5G device in 2019, right, the first 5G commercial smartphone, S10 5G, the actual research for 5G probably started a decade back, right? Because uh, you need to do a lot of homework. I mean, you know, there is a lot of, uh, lot of pre-standards work wherein you need to identify or you need to actually define, I mean, what is going to be 5G and what can be the candidate technologies that can help you realize this vision, 
right and you need to evaluate each of this candidate technology because only some of them turn out to be promising whereas others you need to drop off, drop it drop them off right uh, and then okay now you have certain candidates likewise there are several other companies around the world so they bring their candidate technologies now you need to align on a common standard right and then the terminals and the network development has to happen as per the agreed standard then the trials then the commercial deployments so there is a very long cycle in terms of the communication technologies so that's why you will see actually news articles uh, ranging from say 2016 17 where samsung has conducted several demos trials in japan korea elsewhere in fact in 2018 winter olympics in korea pyeongchang i mean that's where the large scale 5g use cases were demonstrated which culminated in the first 5g smartphone in 2019 so like that probably i mean unless we start the groundwork today for what will eventually become 6g uh, you are going to you know uh, leave a lot of problems unaddressed because we already know what are not addressed by 5g right or what cannot be addressed by 5g so if you don't start working on them from today i mean you are going to you know delay certain tech, uh, certain services and applications from being a reality Right. So you are right that's why we already published a Samsung 6G vision you know it's a white paper uh, highlighting our 6G vision so maybe i'll take you through just a couple of, you know the drive, drivers for this vision right so the first realization in fact if you see the white paper of course it's available publicly on the uh, Samsung portal is this realization that you know humans can have certain limitations in terms of either data processing or sensory uh, point of view uh, but machines need not have those limitations like for example i mean say i can hear only certain frequencies right which are in the audible spectrum A- any frequency over and above or b- below the audible range i cannot even sense but a machine can sense that so same thing about the vision i mean if something is moving so fast which is you know faster than my eye refresh rate right i cannot recognize something has changed but a machine can detect right it can record at a much higher frame rate and uh, it can detect lot more so it's kind of you know you can you are almost talking in terms of a superhuman abilities right which can be possible in the machines naturally which have to serve you of course at the end of the day so for such kind of processing capabilities what kind of a network do you need i mean if you need your machines to do operate at this highest level of uh, you know uh, sensory and processing capabilities uh, what kind of capa- capabilities should the network can uh, provide right that's the outset basically or the premise so that's where for example if you see say today's millimeter of 5g for example if it provides a, a gigabit 1 gigabit 2 gigabits in gigabits per second data rate right when we say of these words these are what are called as a peak data rates like if you are the only user you know uh, around right you will get all the data rate for yourself but if you are sharing that bandwidth or if there are multiple users so naturally your average data rates drop right but uh, in the 60 period for the kind of use cases we envisage right <laughs> the each user may actually need 1 gbps as an average data rate not the peak you, you need that much average data rates so for that you need to you know squeeze out some more capacities in these airwaves so that's where probably we talk about you know now untapped spectrum is available in what is called as a terahertz frequency bands right so now once you are done with millimeter okay go to terahertz <laughs> so the naturally they come with lot more constraints so you need to have technologies to be able to communicate at those uh, highest frequencies you know and still be able to reliably communicate so that will take time so that will need all these years so likewise for your uh, you know truly holographic calls right if you need to transform a hologram of a person or a thing right so the kind of uh, point density needed i mean the kind of uh, you know you need to take all the image of a person and then transfer it over a network right that needs huge data rates one thing but also the latency is needed like for example because every motion that happens i mean in your hologram 
right it needs to reflect in near real time you know even one pixel cannot you know go out of place right so that needs actually latencies of sub millisecond actually so probably you can go another factor uh, another by one tenth right so so these are set as the requirements basically okay can we go capacity wise probably another 100x or 1000x actually and latency wise another one tenth compared to 5g so with these as the goal posts so now we need to you know take care of what, what can be the enablers to reach there so that's where okay we have terahertz uh, frequencies as one of the enablers you know one of the means to reach there there are other candidates mentioned i mean if you see in the white paper it talks about split computing right so the split computing is basically you know today my computational needs will explode that uh, i want to break my complex computational task into smaller chunks and give it to whoever can offer me computational capacity i can rent out see if i am in a in a conference room with 10 devices in this room my device need to perform a high intensity computation split it and use all these devices as your computational devices get the sub task done and assemble it back on your device so that way you are multiplying the computational capacity right so this needs uh, what is this called as a split computing and then you will also see probably the the pervasive ai i mean today when we talk about artificial intelligence right you are talking about it existing in blocks right either you have a uh, some natural language engine basically which processes your speech or handwriting right it, it's available in blocks but if there is a pervasive ai i mean you know which uh, which knows okay what is happening in my device what is happening in this network node what is happening in this network node and what is happening at the other end and can intelligently whatever i mean you know uh, coordinate all these uh, individual block level intelligences so that's another thing that will unlock or that will make what is called as the most optimized uh, 6g network right so so these are the i mean again as you saw it's at a vision stage so we have set some goal posts and some means of achieving those goal posts so now the the hard work actually starts now lovely lovely beautiful lovely t- i'm so so excited because being in the space i do understand that i think in another tech, uh, uh, earlier everything was in a linear space a- a- every everything was going normally now it, it's gone in an exponential space a- and what possibly looks a- a like a 10 year or 20 or 50 year horizon could possibly happen maybe in half the time or maybe even less that that's what technology is enabled it to do and, and you, you know there, there might be obviously the naysayers who must be saying going saying we haven't even got 5g and you guys are talking about 6g but that thank you for being that individual who builds for the future you know because of people like you who have the future vision we the people or, or the community of the world gets a technology which maybe in the initial stages maybe you might be saying oh wow do we actually need it but yes we actually need it because that is called evolution we as a human race are forever curious we are seekers we we are looking at ways to enable us enlighten us become better individuals you know take care of the environment take care of each others create a better world and that can happen if we understand that all of these technologies are just a friend maybe a partner and 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 if we leverage them right now we'll be able to not just become better individuals but we'll be able to grow better companies that will actually be human first rather than the the tech behemoths we have right now who are manipulating and holding our data <laughs> and creating disruption so i i hope that this this huge convergence which is happening you know with artificial intelligence uh, uh, ar vr mr and 5g all of these once it actually takes say, shape i hope the future generation of entrepreneurs start keeping human first and start building which will create or make us into better citizens where we create a better world on that note it was super awesome talking to you thank you for sharing or uh, uh, the insights I, i really enjoyed the conversation i hope the listeners also uh, will really help, uh, like it so thank you really appreciate this to my listeners if you like what you see and yeah please press the subscribe button until next time see you guys bye bye thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you very much bye